being godly and being content is true wealth. That's what it's saying in the Bible. But in this world, you will be depressed until you end up with a million dollars in the bank. And for most people, that'll never happen. It all comes down to lifestyle, to uh, the way you see you living your life. That's what's going to determine how much your man is going to have to bring to the table. And basically, it boils down to this. Do you have to live in a mansion or are you okay with living in a modest home? Do you have to have a Bentley or are you okay driving around in a Toyota? Do you have to have Saks Fifth or are you okay shopping at Target? Or are you okay with shopping at Target sometimes and then shopping at Saks Fifth some of the other time? <laughs> That's what that's really that's what that's what it really boiled down to at the end of the day. So everybody being upset with Ebony K. Williams and her comments about not dating bus drivers and you know everybody talking about income and all of those things, none of that matter unless you feel like you have to have an extravagant lifestyle to be happy. A lot of people don't necessarily feel like they have to be rich. A lot of people live in reality. We know that most people ain't going to be rich. We know that there's a reason why they only make a handful of them Bentleys every year, because most people ain't going to be able to afford one. And most people are going to be content with where they're at. So this idea that's floating around online about high value men and having to be rolling in the dough and all of those other things it's kind of crazy to me. There are women out there that you do have to have all that stuff that they they preach about online. But there's a there's a way even there's even more women that don't require that. I know a lot of men that have working class jobs like truck drivers and uh stuff like that, warehouse workers and stuff like that. All a lot of these men have families, they have wives, they have kids and they holding it down. You know what I'm saying? You don't necessarily have to be a lawyer or a, a businessman, CEO, making millions of dollars to be able to have a, a family. But if you listen to the podcast and, you know, the, these women that they, they pick out, the ones that believe that they have to be living the lifestyle and the rich and famous to be happy, you will be tricked into believing that you do have to have that kind of money. But we all know it's not true. And I started out driving trucks. I, I used to be a truck driver. I still got a CDL. When I started out, I was making $25,000 a year. That's what I made my first year. By the time I had stopped driving trucks, my best year as a truck driver working for a company, I didn't own the truck, I made in the 80s. I was able to live my life and do the things that I wanted to do. I was able to take care of my responsibilities as a man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I didn't make six figures as a truck driver, but I'm still, I still held it down as a married man, as a, a father. So all of this talk about high value this and high value that is kind of crazy because to me and a lot of other people, High value ain't just related to what's in your wallet. You know, a lot of women just want somebody that's going to treat them right. A lot of women just want somebody that's going to respect them and love them and not cheat on them. A lot of women just want somebody that they can depend on. It don't take 100,000 plus to be that kind of guy. My mama... She's a, a, a woman that has made multiples of six figures for a lot of years. Got her own business. She just got married. She married a guy that's a diesel mechanic. He don't make six figures a year, I don't think. But she loved the guy, and he treat her right, and she happy. They doing stuff like eating at the, at the park and feeding ducks and stuff. I ain't never seen my mama do no junk like that. But she happy. <laughs> so... 
I know everybody is is hung up on lifestyle and, and rich and diamonds and Bentley and this and that and this and that. But man, it don't take all that to be happy. I think that's one of the side effects of the social media world. Because at one point in time when we saw a Lamborghini or something like that on TV, it was like a, a it was like a, a dream almost. It's like a figment of our imagination when we saw somebody get out of that car. That's why they meant so much at one point in time. But now people can rent these cars. They can take pictures with them every day. They can drive them on South Beach. They can max out a credit card and go and get a bunch of Louis and all that and make it look like they balling. Everybody can. It's easy. You can do that. If you, if you really want to do that, you can do that. It's not hard at all. You know what I'm saying? So all of these people that's faking it, trying to fake it until they make it, they got everybody's head screwed up thinking that, oh, I have to be rich to be happy. And it's not the case. The Bible says be content with where you at. Uh, uh, being godly and being content is true wealth. That's what it says in the Bible. But in this world... If you let everybody get into your mind and influence you, you'll be depressed until some some kind of miraculous way you end up with a million dollars in the bank. And for most people, that'll never happen. So the question that I want to ask is, how much does it really take for you to live the kind of lifestyle that you want to live? Me and my wife have a pretty good life set up. We got a nice house, five bedroom, three bath house, nice big yard, three car garage, all of these things. You know, we straight, good life, good, you know what I'm saying? And, and we ain't even been married for a super long time. But because we worked together and because there was things going on before we got married, we were able to do what a lot of people can't do in 10 years, in two years. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. It's about matching up with somebody that you can grow with. Matching up with somebody that you can actually love and be happy with. Matching up with somebody that's going to be loyal. Somebody that's, that's going to respect you. Somebody that's going to honor you. Somebody that's going to cover you and think about you. When times get hard, they're not going to run into somebody else's arms because they're upset with you or because you they're not getting their way or because they're in a depression and they're trying to feel better. You, you want somebody that's going to come to you and, and y'all can work through problems together. You want a teammate. If I made a million dollars a year and I was a, a abusive husband, it wouldn't matter about that million dollars. My wife would still be unhappy. She probably could tell herself, well, at least you're getting the money. At least you got a nice car to drive. He's not nice to you. He don't care about you for real. But at least he, 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 he'll he give you some money and you go to the mall when you want to and stuff like that. She could trick herself into to feeling that way if she wanted to. But we know it'll be fake. She'll be pretending to be happy. That's why a lot of these men that's rich get cheated on with a dude that don't have nothing. Because she using him for the money. But the stuff that really matters, she get it from the broke guy. <laughs> I just want people to understand this. What is for, whatever is for you is going to be for you. God will bless you with what you're supposed to have. If you're a good guy, you out here working hard, you're a respectable guy, you know, you're a godly man, you will find the right wife for you. You will find a woman that will fit. Don't get upset about the Ebony K. Michelle's of the world. If you're supposed to have an Ebony K. Michelle, God to bless you with that too. So when a person get on a podcast and tell you what their preference is, let them have it. Ain't no sweat off your back. You still going to get what's coming to you. 
That's all I got to say about that. I'll see y'all on the next one.